Bernard Gauthier's article on the centrality of image in politics really sparked some anger within me. His entry is frighteningly true. I only wish more people could read this article and realize the distressing truth of what almost every person in America who takes part in elections bases their vote on. I never really thought much about elections. All my life, I've been brought up to support politics and take part in voting as it shows commitment to the growth and improvement of one's community or nation. After reading this article, I now feel conflicted. Even though Gauthier's article focuses on American presidency, I still can't help but apply the same ideas to Canadian politics. Bernard brings to face the notion that there are four channels of which almost every American bases their votes on. The audio channel, which is speech quality based on confidence. The kinesics channel, which is the body movements and gestures. The tactile channel, which is how leaders contact and distance themselves from others. And the clothing channel. He goes into depth of how each channel is deeply assessed by voters sitting in front of a television screen. It is no doubt that what every person in America votes off of is a world view that they have compiled through staring at a screen, watching solely a candidate's body language, clothing, gestures, confidence, speaking style, and more. American voters assume that these physical qualities are the most accurate way of telling whether a candidate will live up to his promises and be a strong president. Rather than getting overwhelmed by packing their minds with political policies and issues enforced by political leaders, they would much rather learn by assessing a politician's image. Defending this argument, Samuel Popkin convincingly notes, voters find efficient ways to arrive at reasoned choices, what he calls low information rationality. Voters also base their choice of candidates on their assessment of overall competence. Rather than trying to learn the candidate's specific position on a long list of issues, we save time and effort by seeking a measure of ability to handle a job, an assessment of how effective the candidate will be in office, of whether he or she can get things done. Popkin also significantly questions where voters actually get their information to assess a candidate's competence. His answer? They look to those qualities that critics are quick to dismiss as mere image. Another note that convinced me was that voters focus on assessing the personal qualities of candidates rather than trying to assess the candidates' positions on issues that may or may not come up during their term in office. We assess their overall values, empathy, caring, and morality. We care more about sincerity and character when we are unsure of what someone will do. And finally, if politics are truly all about image, then why does it have to be so carefully managed and controlled by groups of professionals, such as PRs, spin doctors, and image consultants? If the elections are almost entirely based on image, then why are the leaders even allowed to have professionals control their image? What we see is not who they are, but rather who they and several experts want us to believe and see, so they will get our vote. We are all voting on lies and false reality, and it is shocking that still nobody has realized this truth. It is absolutely ridiculous that so many people continue to base their vote on things such as what color of suit Barack Obama wore one day or whether he mumbled during one of his speeches or perhaps that he distanced himself a few centimeters too far from John McCain another day. It is as if people don't realize that so much of how you present yourself depends on factors such as sleep or hunger, etc. Is it not possible that perhaps the night before one of John McCain's speeches, his child could not sleep, and as a result did not have as powerful of a speech as he hoped for, and as a result lost the election? When you base votes on image, such scenarios are sadly possible. One day, I hope the citizens of America will realize that they can only prove that they are living in a country run by a man with a good image, an image that people trust enough to control essentially every aspect of their lives.